Hey, Scipio here, and uh, if you watched my last video, uh, I showed you a way that I was using a pot uh, knob on my uh, 9XR using the OpenTX firmware to variably adjust the rates uh, or the, the weight of my throws on my aileron and elevator servos on my Bloody Wonder. I mentioned before that I wanted to find a better way to do it and I, I did play around and I found a better way to do it and I'll show you why I think it's better. I'm still not positive it's the optimum solution. Uh, so actually um, as I go through this I'm hoping that those of you who are very familiar with Companion 9X and OpenTX can uh, offer some, some advice on if there's a way to make this a little bit more elegant. So I'm gonna go back to the very first model that I uh, was working on. Uh, this is the model that I was using with my uh, last video and if you remember correctly I have uh, no custom switches. I do have a custom, a uh, couple of custom functions and none of them are related to my variable weights setting. What I am using for that is curves, uh, a 25 to 75 uh, curve and then in my sticks uh, you can see I'm just 100% here and then it's in the mixes that I have a multiplier uh, of the curve 1 through the P1 pot source. So um, let me just re-show you what that looks like. So if I look at my uh, simulator here you can see that uh, I'm gonna fix the Y so that uh, when I move this around we don't get uh, distracted by other movement but you can see channel 2 right here is my um, ailerons and as I move that uh, left and right I'm getting uh, you know about a 50 uh, percent throw on either side and if you remember right I have pot 1 set to adjust that throw I'm gonna hold the X and then uh, push it out here so you can see how adjusting the pot adjusts the amount of throws that I have uh, on that particular uh, channel. And same thing if I go negative, if I go full negative, the, it adjusts the throws the same way. So that was a good first run solution. My problem was, however, is um, it was, number one, it was always on. Uh, so as long as I'm running the model, this potentiometer here, this pot, can change my throws. So if I accidentally bump that or had it set somewhere wonky, um, it would uh, it would mess things up. Now ideally what I would do is figure out where I wanted my throws, uh, identify what percentage I was actually using uh, for the weight based on this pot uh, value, and then uh, set a hard-coded uh, rate, like maybe a, a, a normal rate and a high rate uh, to, to give me some options. But anyway, um, I didn't like the fact that once I, I couldn't turn off the ability to adjust that so I wanted to find a way to turn it off so that got me to looking at uh, another option and this is uh, this is that option and this kind of follows from Scott Page's uh, video about custom functions and switches um, and it's a uh, uh, a little bit more involved you can see here I have some custom functions and this one here is uh, if the elevator switch uh, not the stick, the switch uh, is ena enabled, then adjust the global variable 1 to source of channel 9. And then if I go back into my mixes, I can see channel 9 has uh, a source of pot 1, and I'm using a curve to limit that, the same curve. So what happens is, uh, if you look at in the simulator, so as you can see here, I have channel 9, and right now when the pot's at midpoint, I'm at 50, just like my curve, it's going to follow the curve. If I go all the way to the bottom uh, of the pot movement, it's 25, and if I go all the way to the top, it's at 75. So that gets me my uh, ability to adjust the weights. Um, and then, uh, as you can see, let me uh, fix Y and hold X. That way I can just drag it over here. You can see my channel 2 um, is set, but adjusting the pot doesn't actually impact anything. However, if I select the elevator switch, 
now I am controlling the weights of my throw with the pot switch. And that's great because uh, I can turn it off and now it's no longer impacting the, uh, the throw. But the problem you see here is that as I turn it off and turn it on, you can see my channel two uh, applies that weighting immediately. Um, so if I turn it on and the switch is, or the if I turn it on, if I enable the switch and the pot was in a different position than it was when I last left it, my throw is gonna automatically jump to that. And that's not very elegant at all. So you can see here, if I, if I do the extremes, and uh, I have it set for 100% uh, percent throw, I disable, and then I go all the way to the negative uh, 100, which is a 25% weight, and I flip that switch, uh, that channel automatically jumps down to a 25% throw. So I didn't like that either. It's close, um, but when I enable the switch, disable it, and re-enable it, I could run into some, some problems. So the next iteration I came up with uh, does exactly, I think, what I'm looking for it to do, uh, but it's not a very elegant solution. Uh, it does show off the power of OpenTX, however, and the ability to pretty much set things the way you want. So I'm gonna kinda, these offsets are uh, set with my model. So I'm gonna reduce these offsets to get them close to zero so things look okay for you. Uh, again, I'm gonna fix, uh, actually hold X, fix Y. That way when I move this stick, I only move uh, channel two so it doesn't confuse you. Um, so right now um, in this model, um, I have uh, my max throw is at 50% and my low throw is at 50% uh, negative. So that's exactly uh, midpoint of my throws, how I set the middle of my pot. And as you can see here, adjusting the pot value still adjusts channel nine, but doesn't mess with my um, my actual throws. So let me uh, let me move that, stick it over to one side, and you can see there it doesn't uh, adjust the throws. So the one thing I didn't like though is the ability to um, like if I have it set at a hundred percent here, and I click the elevator before it would immediately jump to a hundred percent throws. In this case, uh, you have you see no change when I turn on and off the elevator switch, which is my switch to enable uh, this pot to impact the weights. But watch what happens when I go back to mid percent. I now have access to uh, to adjust the throws, and if I uncheck it, I no longer adjust the throws. But if I go to the other extreme, check it, it does not jump for me, and then I can adjust it. Uh, and then it's it catches up to where it last left off. So this is a little bit of a complicated method I used here. But as you can see, I've got a couple of custom switches in play here. So custom switch one, it only is enabled if the elevator is set. And you can see that hits right there. And then that triggers custom switch two. You can see uh, once I have custom switch two set, then now I have control over my throws. Custom switch one still exists, uh, and it just kind of comes on and off uh, as necessary, but it doesn't impact things. So what I did here, uh, and hopefully I can explain this, is I have it set, uh, actually let me go into the, uh, the switches and functions. So I've got switches, and I've got functions that control this, and I've got curves still, and I've got, uh, in my mixes, I've got this channel nine. So channel nine is the same as it was before. Uh, the source of channel nine is the pot, which is limited by the curve. So when I turn the pot based on the curve settings, channel nine gets impacted. If I go to my custom functions, I have a function here that says always on, adjust the global variable one and make the source channel nine, which means every whatever channel nine is set at, which is whatever I move my pot to with limitations of the curve, that's what global variable one's gonna be. And then I say, one time only, when you first load up the model, go ahead and set global variable two to 50, which is the midpoint. And I'll tell you why that's important here in a second. And uh, I actually have another one time switch down here that says global variable four set to 50. And then I have two 
custom switch functions that based on custom switches, you're gonna adjust the global value three to 100 and then uh, adjust global value four and set the source as channel nine. Uh, so this is kind of complicated. Here's the custom switches. I have A equals B, uh, which says if global value one and global value two and the elevator is set, then uh, enable custom switch one. Now remember, when custom switch one goes positive, I get uh, a value set of 100 for global variable three. Then I have a deal that says, if global variable three equals 100, and the elevator still flipped, then enable custom switch two, and then custom switch two says, go ahead and set global variable four based on the channel nine input. So wherever the pod is, is what global variable four is. And then, uh, and then as you can see in my sticks, global variable four is what controls the weight. So kind of complicated, um, which is why I'm looking for a different, uh, a more elegant solution. Um, so going back to the simulator, let me uh, fix Y, hold X, okay, got this. Let me uh, center this servo for us, okay, as close as I can get it. Um, so remember, got this, my default value for global uh, variable four is 50. Global variable four is 50, which means if nothing changes, it's gonna assume the center position of my, my pot settings, which is 50 also. So if nothing changes, just it's just as if I turned it on and had this enabled, but it doesn't do anything. It's just stop, it's, uh, it's gonna stick at 50, which gives me the midpoint of my, my throw scenario here. Um, <clears throat> then if I select the elevator, okay, and my pot, let me go back here. Uh, if my pot position equals 50, plus or minus a little bit here, um, it triggers uh, custom switch one. And that's done here. If global variable one equals global variable two and the elevator, and remember global variable two got set uh, automatically as 50. So when global variable one and global variable two match, engage custom switch one. So when the pot is at the midpoint, basically is what I'm saying. So rather than having it start wherever it is in the, in the swing of things, I don't, I don't actually attach it to the weights until it's at the midpoint. That way I don't have any weird jumping. And then I can adjust up or down from the midpoint. So when global variable one and global variable two match, enable custom switch one. When custom switch one gets, uh, matched, then go ahead and set global variable three to 100. And then because global variable three is at 100, then go ahead and engage custom switch two, which is, which is a more lasting uh, function, right? As long as the elevator switch is set, then that will remain at 100. Uh, so the problem without that, when I didn't do that, if I just had it set so, uh, so that when uh, global variable one and two match, it would, uh, it would trip custom switch one, but it wouldn't stay. It would, uh, as you can see here, it's, it's probably kind of hard to catch, but custom switch one will only hit uh, on a moment. It's like an instantaneous moment in time that it hits and then and it goes away. So then my, my waiting would go away. So I had to get something persistent. So custom two remains persistent uh, as long as the elevator uh, switch is enabled and that allows me to maintain the weights. The persistence is done by this, this uh, value of 100. It basically says, look, set it to 100 and as long as that's at 100, leave it there. And then when the elevator's turned off, put it back to zero. So it no longer matches, so custom switch two doesn't match, and then it's no longer impacting my throws. Uh, so it's really hard for me to explain this. I'm sure there's a, probably an easier way to even explain it. Uh, I'm certain there's probably an easier way to, uh, to achieve the same thing. Uh, so this is kind of a call to see if anybody else can come out with a more elegant solution. But as you can see here, I have what I want, which means I've got you know mid throws, however, with the flip of a switch, 
I can now go uh, to oops. I can now go to controllable variable throws. I can turn that capability off anytime in the middle of the flight and it doesn't change again. And I can re-enable it without any crazy jumps. Um, but I just have to kind of know what I'm uh, what I'm looking at. But anyway, that's it. Uh, it definitely helps to highlight the uh, the capabilities of OpenTX and uh, the rabbit holes that you can get yourself into. And the problem with this solution, the why one of the reasons why I think it's not very elegant, is look, I'm using three, I'm using four variables, two custom switches, and one, two, three, four, five, six functions just to make this happen. Um, now, this has kind of been just an exercise in learning for me, so I don't know how practical it will be. My, my first model of being able to just go out with a, with a maiden flight, figure out what I want my settings to be, and then go hard code them is probably the better solution in the end. Uh, but I was looking for uh, ways to uh, manipulate uh, the system sort of uh, with all of these functions, variables, and switches. So uh, anyway... Uh, that's about it. I just wanted to show that, see if anybody had any better ideas on how to accomplish the same thing. And, uh, and if not, even uh, perhaps just show people uh, how, uh, how configurable and customizable OpenTX can be, especially when running the uh, Companion 9X software. So I appreciate you watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.